The, the thing that he first started studying as far as what, where we had to change was, uh, the big change anyway, was um, Sabbath. And so he comes home and he tells me, he says, I think that, you know, we're supposed to be worshiping on Sabbath. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so anyway, um, he starts, he's like, I'm going to study it through. And so every time he would learn something different, he would come home. And so he's like, I'm, I'm really trying to find Sunday in the Bible. I'm really trying to find it. And I'm like, I hope you do, you know? <laughs> and so he comes home one day and he's like, I think, I, I think I've got something. I think, you know, I've got something that will hold Sunday. And I'm thinking, good, you know? And uh, so he, what, where, what was it? There's uh, Pentecost when the Holy Spirit yeah. fell and I said it was and I studied the history and I said it, it happened on Sunday it happened on Sunday you know Christ rose on Sundays he, the Holy Spirit fell at Pentecost and I, I began to study that and I said that that's that's our back door that's the because I was looking at, and I broke my own rule because for about two years uh, I led an apologetics Bible study class and which we didn't realize what we were doing, but we were tearing down strongholds of, of mainstream beliefs that we didn't even realize we were doing. We were just teaching the scripture as, as God was revealing it to us and, and opening our eyes to truth and um, about there really had to be a change in our life. You know, there's something more to it than what we were seeing. And obedience. Obedience. So we, we began to preach a message of obedience that we didn't understand. Yeah, in the beginning, obedience was the first thing, I guess. Was, you know, we kept thinking, okay, but what are we supposed to be obedient, obedient to? to? And anytime you ask uh, a mainstream pastor or teacher, their uh, answer is always to Christ, to Christ's law. And like, okay, well, you know, what is that? And they're like, well, love, you know love God and, and love your neighbor. And I'm like, okay, but how do we do that? I mean, that was my question. Well, you know, and it's always, I know the main thing that I always heard was, you know, listen to your heart. Well, then scripture tells me my heart is deceit deceitfully <laughs> wicked. And I'm like, I'm supposed to listen to a deceitfully wicked heart? <laughs> and, and you know, and you're thinking, then you hear, well, if, if things don't come true, things that you've thought or, or you've listened to your heart and then it, it doesn't work out, then you were, it was just your own thought and it wasn't really a word from God. And so I'm like, well, how do we really know what God wants from us? And we never, I mean, like that question was never answered for me. And so we were talking about the Sabbath when Jason, uh, I told him, I said, Jason, that doesn't really, you know, take away from the fact that uh, Sabbath doesn't stand. And so, um, what are you laughing about? No, I was just laughing because I'm coming home thinking I've got it. I've got yeah. it. And, and she's, I wanted him. And I it. tell her because, and like I said, I broke my own rule. And, and what I was saying is I broke my own rule with the, uh, in that apologetics class because we opened the class every, every week. We were meeting outside normal church days. Uh, there were about four different churches represented. It started out with about, it started out with four of us. I grew up where we had 40 on an off night during the week and, and we would open up saying lay down everything that you think you understand lay down uh, you know lay down tradition we want to know what the what does you know as Paul wrote what said the scripture what does the Bible say and with that being said I broke my own rule I said take off the spectacles of preconception the things you think because the problem is as we go in our culture is we go looking at the Bible with preconceived ideas trying to prove what we think we already understand. We're looking for proof text and, and you know uh, I learned really quickly that uh, you know a proof text without context I heard it said one time is a pretext uh, for a proof text you know uh, a text taken out of context is a pretext for a proof text and that was uh, I said don't do that I, I, I emphasize don't do that don't do that don't do that but I did that because for the first time I broke my rule, I was looking for Sunday. I was trying to prove Sunday in the Bible. And then, of course, I think I've got a straw to, uh, you know, just a, a, a glimmer of hope to hang on to. And I come home and I'm like, it's Pentecost. It happened on Sunday. And man, I was like, so? That doesn't and I prove. I was really hoping he would find something. So when he comes home and, and I hear myself say, that doesn't really prove that we're supposed to worship on Sunday. And I was like, man, did I really just say that? And I was thinking, I thought she wanted me to help her find it. <laughs> and we couldn't, we couldn't find it until finally it came down to the point, ultimately. It began with Sabbath. The fourth, you know, the Ten Commandments are, are posted everywhere mm -hmm. 
in the Sunday church. They're posted everywhere and they say that we go by those and all but the one, number four. And, and, and the Father stuck me right there. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So I began to test all of the theories, all the, all the explanations to why we go to church on Sunday and I couldn't find it. I'm looking at secular history. Uh, you know, I look for it in the Bible. I, I speak to several men, um, several men with uh, highly educated theological degrees. I talk to a man who had a PhD in theology. I speak to a man who has a doctor's degree in theology. Men with master's degrees in biblical languages. Just lay pastors who've been pastors for 40 plus years. Guys with master of divinity degrees from seminary. And I asked them the question, you know, where, where did this happen? You know, Sunday, how did we come to Sunday? And they all unanimously gave me the same answer. And it said something like this, Jason, if you're looking for a verse in the Bible where God changed the day of Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, you won't find it. It's not in the Bible. And I asked the question, that's not a problem, why? Yeah. Why is that not a problem? And then they would always go to the early church fathers this and uh, you know, to the early church that. And I said, but what about the Word of God? What does the Word of God say? And I began to look in secular history and I find where, you know, Constantine, you know, changed it. You know, he outlawed Sabbath and blended it to Sunday worship with, uh, with paganism. And I'm seeing this and it's not like it's hidden. That's what I tell people. I say, it's not hidden. It's not like a hidden thing that's a secret to find. It's in basic encyclopedia textbooks. It's everywhere. You can find it with ease. And I'm finding these things and it's just turning our world upside down because we don't, we don't know what to do now. When we first uh, started keeping Sabbath, we, we started with um, just resting on Saturday and, and you know, not purchasing things, not, not working or causing anyone else to work. And, and we were still going to the Sunday church. And we did that for probably a month or two. Yeah, a couple months probably. And, you know, that sounded good when we said we were going to do it. That sounded really good. But then when we started trying to do that, once you hear truth and then you go in and you start hearing partial truths or complete, you know, false doctrine, I just couldn't do it anymore. I mean, we, and then we even said, okay, well, you know, we'll meet with, um, we had a couple that um, we had talked to and shared with and, and they've seen it in the scripture too. So it was just going to be them and our family uh, meeting on Sabbath and uh, we were going to let our children go on Wednesday nights. And we were still kind of involved with the church. I mean, it was just a slow I was thing. still a Sunday school teacher. I mean, I was teaching co-ed Sunday school class, uh, a class that, you know, had grown from, you know, a dozen or so to you know, 25 to 30 people. They were going to split and the class. And they they were almost to the point the class had grown. They were going to split the class. And lo and behold, we're having um, uh, a study in Genesis. And lo and behold, we get to Genesis in the very beginning and the seventh day. And the lesson plan basically just skipped over. It was like, oh, God bless the seventh day and sanctified it and made it holy and da 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 moving on. And I was like, I got to stop here. There's something to be said. And with that, I announced to them openly that morning. My family and I began to keep Sabbath. We believe that God's word stands. And of course, crickets in the room. It went dead silent. As soon as class was over, here was the irony. I had a couple guys come straight to me. One guy tells me, he said, man, I admire what you're doing, following your convictions. That's great, man. I look up to you and I respect you tremendously for that. You know, and he shook my hand. He said, you know, I'm not saying it's for me and my family, but we respect you. I thought, well, that's odd because if it's true, then it should be for all of us. Then the next guy, comes up and he's like, man, 
that, that took a lot of courage. We respect you. I can't help it though, I have a question. It's okay, he said, do you buy gas on Saturday? <laughs> and I was like, well, I, I'll tell you what I wanted to say. I wanted to say, do you buy gas on Sunday? That's what I wanted to say, but I didn't. I, I actually, I think it caught me off guard. And I said, well, actually I used to, but no, I don't anymore. And I don't think he was expecting that answer. Cause he was like, oh, I was like, you know, we try not to now because it would cause someone else to have to work. And God says that, you know, even your maid servant, man servant should not work. Yeah. And, and uh, that was irony. You know, of course, we get combated with all kinds of things such as, you know, it was, it's a Jewish thing. And uh, that was, a, it was a Jew, the Jewish holy day and blah, 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 blah. And, of course, naturally, uh, kind of a tendency sometimes to have a little bit of sarcasm. And I said, well, how many Jewish cows have you ever met? They're like, what? And I'm like, well, because he says the donkeys, the oxen, nothing work. I don't know. I didn't know if it was a Jewish thing. I never met a Jewish cow before. <laughs> if I did, I didn't know.